I'm so excited that you're here because I have several winter farmhouse scrap wood DIYs that I know you're going to love. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay, friends, now I cannot take credit for this gorgeous house. My sweet, handy husband was really itching to do a project. It was Sunday, and he said, do you have any ideas? And he has a huge pile of scrap wood because he is a handyman. So I came up with this little house shelf DIY. So he was kind enough to put it together for me because, y'all, I'm breastfeeding and this has been such a hard journey for me and I'm doing my best to stay in the game. I'm really doing a good job, but it's just really hard to get things done. So I'm so grateful that he was willing and he really wanted to make this and he said, look, you can make this for your video. So again, I'm just so grateful for him. Now, again, he is not a video. He, I should say he's not a filmmaker. Um, he was like getting ahead of himself and I'm like, wait a minute, we have to show the people. So I did capture it from this point on. And basically all he did was cut a piece at the bottom and then he cut two pieces for the sides, one piece for the middle, and then two pieces for the roof. Now the roof pieces as well as all three of the middle pieces need to be cut at a 45, or I should say the two side pieces and the roof pieces need to be cut at a 45 degree angle. And then the middle piece he cut kind of like in a V to go in the middle. Now I have all the measurements for you guys. Again, I'm sorry that I did not capture the entire process of putting it all together, but I figured that this was better than nothing. So like I said, I will leave the measurements in the description box as well as the pinned comment for y'all. And then for the middle pieces, all he did was cut two pieces for the shelves obviously he measured how big of a pe how big of pieces that he needed and then he's so cute you guys he drilled holes in the sides kind of like if you were putting together a cube organizer how you're going to put the middle piece together or on first and then you will go with the shelves he also drilled holes in the shelves and used a very small dowel rod to make wooden dowels. That way the shelves would not go anywhere. And then once he had the middle shelves on, then he put the one side on and he also screwed down the roof. And like I said, I'm I'm so, so sorry that I did not capture this entire project. But if you guys would like to see a very slowed down version of how he made this, I can definitely do that for you guys. Let me know down in the comments and I will bring you guys that video tutorial. He would love to do it. I'm trying to convince him to create a channel because I keep trying to tell him that he has so many tips and tricks that people would love to hear and he loves teaching. So I thought that that would be a really cool idea. So leave it in the comments, encourage him or we could do like a couples channel. I thought that that would be super cool. So leave it in the comments encouraging Mark to create a channel or for a couple DIY channel. I think that that would be so fun. So once he had my house all put together, then I take some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree and I would definitely suggest to use some wood putty, but I did not have any inside. If y'all have been around, you know that I just had a baby and right now I'm DIYing out of my kitchen because I have to be right there with the baby and he's attached to the tip. I was saying attached to the hip, but it came out tit and <laughs> I guess that's kind of true. He's attached to the tit right now. So um, I got to do what I got to do. But once I had all of my holes and all of the places that I wanted um, filled in, filled in, then I took some antique wax by Waverly and some water and mixed that together. I also added just a drop of ink Waverly chalk paint and mixed that up as a stain. And I stained all of the parts that 
did not have the lightweight spackling. Y'all know I'm super impatient and I really didn't have the time to wait for the lightweight spackling to dry. So I would definitely suggest if you have the time, let that dry and then stain it. Once I was done, or once the um, lightweight spackling was done drying, then I went ahead, sanded that down, and stained those pieces as well. And then to finish the house part, I let the faux stain dry, and then I used my chip brush that is linked in my Amazon shop, Amazon shop to distress this whole thing and look how gorgeous this is. I cannot wait to show y'all the decor that I made to go with it. So while he had his saw out, I had him cut me several different pieces to make little trees. Now, because of the type of board that we were using, um, he didn't have whole pieces to make the trees. So some of them he just cut for me and then I used my weld bond to glue it together to make an entire tree because if not, it would be kind of lopsided. And I didn't like the way that looked. I liked it much better glued together. So I glued glue four pieces together to make two trees and then I also had two smaller trees. So for the smallest one I painted that with my white Waverly chalk paint with a distressed coat meaning that I just don't go heavy handed with my paintbrush. I leave some of that wood showing through so it's kind of like a reverse distress if you will and then for this one little block that I had a whole chunk I should say. I painted that with my Moss Waverly chalk paint and then I also painted the bigger of the smaller two trees with that paint as well and once again I gave them a distress coat. Next I took the trees that I glued together and I also painted them with my Moss Waverly chalk paint and white Waverly chalk paint as well. And as I always say, if you guys do not like the paint that I use or anything like that, I am just here for inspiration. That does not mean that you have to make yours exactly the same. If you don't have the chalk couture transfers that I'm going to use here in a minute, you can totally pull an image off Google, print it, and Mod Podge that on. You can also print things off and use some graphite paper to trace it on and then go over it with a paint marker. My favorite medium is chalk couture just because it's so quick and easy and the images come out absolutely gorgeous however I do know that not everybody has that or can afford that so if that is the case then just use your imagination you guys I know that a lot of you think that you can't do it or don't have an imagination but I can promise you sometimes I feel the exact same and if I just put my mind to it a little bit I I actually become surprised at what I can do so I would just encourage you guys to think outside the box and use what you have now I did want another tree I felt that it was just missing like a different color so I took this other tree that my husband cut for me and I stained that with that stain that we used on the house and then let that dry or I should say that I am super impatient so I dried it with my blow dryer. I set that aside and I used my chip brush to use that same stain to dry brush all over my white trees. Next, I take this green jute that I got from Walmart and I start by gluing it to the bottom back of the white large tree and then there's no rhyme or reason or technique. I just literally wrapped it all around this tree and then glued the last piece to the back and then cut that down. Last but not least to finish this tree, I've had a bunch of these gold stars from Dollar Tree. Um, I put the gold on there. They were unfinished wood stars that came in a little pack and I had a bunch that I had used my gold chalk paste to fill that in and I glued that to the top of my tree. 
Next, I took all of the pieces that were left and I dry brushed them with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now, I wanted these all to look a little bit different. So for this particular wooden tree, I did go a little bit more heavy handed with my dry brushing. But as I always say, if y'all do not like dry brushing, you can totally skip this step and move on to the next. I then took this transfer that I had left over from the tiered tr the Christmas tiered tray. And as always, the items that are in my chalk shop that I used in this video, I will link down below. But that's why I always tell you guys to grab the transfers if you see ones that you like, because a lot of the times they go um, out of stock or retired. So that's why I always say grab them when you see them. But like I said, I'll leave the ones that I can down in the description box. And if you guys want to know how to get 40% off all of the Chalk Couture items in the shop, text my number, the word chalk. Again, I'll leave my number at the end in the pinned comment and the description box. So I just transferred on that little pattern. Now it did not fit over the entire tree. So I did have to transfer on a little bit, dry it and go all the way down the tree. Um, but it really didn't take me any time at all. And you just want to make sure, like I said, you dry in between moving on to the next piece. I then took those unfinished wood snowflakes from Dollar Tree. I glued one at the top and then randomly glued the rest around the tree. And I absolutely love the way this turned out. Let me know what y'all think. For the next tree, I took this all spruced up transfer. Now this came with a bunch of different transfers. So in my chalk shop, we have transfers that are the entire um, size that you get, if that makes sense. So it's like one image. And then we also have a bunch of transfers that have several different images as well in one so that's another thing i love about it because you can get so many different projects out of just one transfer so i transfer that wording on with my white and gold paste now the white kind of bled through because i added a little bit too much water to it i was way too lazy to run outside and get my new jar of paste so it is what it is i still love the way that it turned out and i love that ombre effect so I know y'all let me know what you guys think as well. For the next little mini tree, I took this little ornament that I got off Timu. I will leave my Timu link down in the description box below. If you guys have not seen my Timu video, I can also link that in the cards in the right hand corner. I had so much fun, but I just cut off the hanger, glued that to the bottom, and then I also made a double jute bow and glued that to the top of my tree. And literally y'all, that was it. Look how gorgeous this is, especially for a tiered tray. And for the last of the little wood trees, once again, that brown you see, I, I didn't capture it on video, but I did go really heavy handed with that faux stain. And then I also took this faux greenery that I had. I cut a little piece and glued it together like a wreath. I then glued that wreath down to the middle of my tree. And then I also took these little teeny tiny red berries that I had off of a pick and glued those down going around the wreath. And then to finish this little tree, I made a double jute bow and glued that to the top. And then I also took that same green jute that I got from Walmart. I made a simple bow and then glued that to the jute bow. and I absolutely love this little teeny tiny tree. I don't know y'all, I am a sucker for anything miniature, so let me know down in the comments which tree that I created was your top favorite. 
For the next DIY, I took another piece of scrap wood and I gave it a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I made sure that that was super dry, and then I took this bed and breakfast bed and <laughs> breakfast transfer. I laid that down, and I only transferred on the trees, the barn, and the words bed and breakfast. And for the trees, I used my pesto chalk paste, and then for the rest, I used my black chalk paste. The other thing that makes me totally addicted to Chalk Couture is not only it's so fun to squeegee the paste on there and then to peel back that transfer and reveal such a crisp, gorgeous, such a crisp, gorgeous image, but I also love the fact that you do not use a lot of paste at all. So if you purchase a jar of paste, that jar of paste will last you so long. I believe I've had that white jar of paste for over a year now and white and black are the colors that I use the most so that just goes to show you how long that this paste really does last so once I had my image transferred on then once again I took some natural jute that I got at Dollar Tree I glued it in the back and wrapped it around the top randomly and then glued it again cut the rest off and that was it for this sign For the last and final DIY, and if you guys are still here, y'all are the real OGs, leave me a snowflake down in the comments, that way I know who's real and who's not, who watches the entire video and who doesn't. If y'all didn't know, when you guys skip through, it really help, It really hurts our channels. It tells YouTube that it's like not a good video or something. I don't know, the algorithms are super weird, but I don't think that everybody knows that. So I always like to mention it because um, watch time and shares really, really help nowadays. The algorithms change so frequently. And so I know I get questions all the time, like, how can we support you? So just watching the entire video, watching the ads and sharing this out, plus leaving comments, all of those things lets YouTube know that y'all are enjoying my content. And it also helps YouTube to push more content to you that they think that you would enjoy. So with that being said, for the last sign, I took that cheers to new year transfer. I transferred on like it reminded me of like glitter or confetti. So around the wording, I used my gold paste. And then for the wording, I once again used my white. Now again, I wish I would have not been so lazy and ran outside and got my new jar of paste because it did bleed but that's okay. No big deal. It is rustic decor. Even though I'm OCD and it was driving me nuts, I did not have the time to fix it or run out there. So it just has to be, it is what it is. Um, once I was done with the wording, then I took that little design at the top and bottom, transferred that on with my white as well. And that completes this video and these projects. I absolutely love the way that this little house looks with all the decor inside. And I love the way that it looks all together. So please let me know down in the comments which was your favorite. Don't forget to share this out. Let your friends know that I uploaded a new video. It really helps my channel. And I just want y'all to know how much I appreciate and love every single one of you. With that being said, if nobody has told you today, Girl, you are absolutely stunning, you're worthy, you're gorgeous, and you literally can do anything you set your mind to. Coming from a recovering addict, eight years clean, if I can do it, I know you can do it as well. If you guys want any ketone or chalk couture info, please text my number on the screen. And with that being said, I love y'all, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. And I did also want to mention, if you guys want to start an online business with me, I have two coupons for two lucky people. Just text me the word biz. Love y'all. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.